Many of the great techniques, philosophies, and tools from the past were created out of need. Almost all techniques, philosophies, and tools were the result of innovation or newly created ideas. The term history is defined in part as the study of past events. Almost every definition of the term history we learn that there is, in most cases, a connection with someone or something. Like any other strategy, Lean has some fascinating history behind it. That history helped form, shape, and innovate the strategy that we know today. Although we will not be writing a dissertation on the historical aspects of Lean, you will be asked to research and share some aspect of Lean on your own. Before you begin your research, let's look at some of the significant happenings that helped form and shape Lean today. In many cases, the continuous improvement strategy we so often refer to as Lean today is deeply rooted in the Toyota production system. When the production system was first being developed, many people did not understand the system. To help others understand the Toyota production system, the Toyota house was created. The system was developed by a now famous engineer, Taiichi Ono. We will look at the Toyota house in more detail later on. While the Toyota production system is in many cases given credit for the creation of Lean, many others contributed to the strategy's explosion too. Eli Whitney was a famous American inventor in the late 1700s and early 1800s. Most people know Mr. Whitney for his invention of the cotton gin. While his cotton gin invention was in fact revolutionary, many people attempted to steal the idea, which ultimately led to Mr. Whitney changing his focus to guns and ammunition. At this time, muskets required a great deal of manual labor and time to build. To reduce the amount of time and complexity associated with building a musket, Mr. Whitney began building interchangeable parts, which improved changeover times and reduced the need for workers to set up and reset up with each musket. As a result of these interchangeable parts, the assembly or assemble to order concept was created. Mr. Whitney also spent a great deal of time studying the motion of workers and people. Mr. Whitney's drive and passion for improving things led to what we know today as time and motion studies. One might guess that even during the Industrial Revolution, many different forms of waste were revealed and great improvements were made as a result of Eli Whitney's innovative mind. In the late 1800s, Frederick Taylor began a study of the work methods of individuals. This study eventually became one of three classic theories of employee motivation referred to as scientific management. Mr. Taylor was an American engineer and management consultant between 1856 and 1917. He had a passion for improving productivity in manufacturing environments. This passion led to his focus on efficiency and productivity in the workplace. Mr. Taylor authored a well-known book in 1911 outlining his theory of scientific management titled The Principles of Scientific Management. Scientific management was used by many people while Mr. Taylor was alive and is still used today. The approach can be summarized in the following process. Number one, study the work. Specifically, look for methods which may be used, motion, time, and fatigue that workers experience. Number two, identify and benchmark. Number three, train and standardize. Number four, recognize and reward, especially with money. Mr. Taylor believed that workers were motivated heavily by the amount of pay they received. As a result, Frederick would set targets that employees needed to meet. 
In other words, he established standards and would reward or pay workers based on their ability to meet those standards. This eventually developed into what we know today as peace rates. Frederick Taylor's influence on lean was not heavily advertised to the world. However, his contributions are quite significant. He understood that workers needed the correct tools and more importantly, some type of motivation to succeed. Though not everyone agrees with how Mr. Taylor went about motivating employees, his studies certainly contributed to the awareness and innovation of time and motion and early forms of reward systems. While the Toyota production system, Mr. Whitney and Mr. Taylor contributed heavily to the development of Lean, you cannot truly understand Lean without taking some time to acknowledge the contributions of Mr. Henry Ford. Henry Ford was the first known entrepreneur to deeply analyze the entire manufacturing system. His analysis would eventually lead to the development of the mass production system. Mr. Ford embraced the idea of standardization and divided the tasks needed to build automobiles into focused and singular activities. This concept reduced the time needed to train employees and allowed factories to establish production lines. These production lines and standardized tasks created an environment where cars would be created for significantly less than competitors. However, customers were limited to only a few different options. Henry Ford was not only one of the great contributors of standardization, but created flow in his shop that the world had never seen before. Ford used techniques like the can-do system that evolved into 5S. Ford also showed the world how streamlining a process could directly improve the bottom line. His competitors at the time were making cars that the market was selling for about $1,500 each. With the mass production system and a streamlined process, Henry could sell his vehicles for a mere $900. This created curiosity in the rest of the world. How could he do it? At the time, America was moving out of the Great Depression and World War II was coming to an end. The Toyota family and Japan began to show interest in Ford's assembly lines. Over the next few years, Ford's assembly line would be studied and used as a basis and a benchmark for what would later evolve into the just-in-time system. While Ford continued to plug away making cars in America, the Allied victory during World War II and its mass production of materials used in the war continued to grab the attention of the Japanese. It was then that the practices of Ford and notable quality names like Dr. Deming and Joseph Duran grabbed the attention of the Toyota Motor Company. After studying Ford's methods and some of the concepts of statistical control, two brilliant engineers by the name of Taiichi Ono and Shigeo Shingo began to incorporate the techniques they learned. In about 1955, Dr. Shingo went to work for Toyota. It was there that he developed the system we know today as SMED and error proofing. Legend has it that Dr. Shingo was able to reduce the setup time of a 1,000 ton press from four hours to a mere three minutes. All throughout Dr. Shingo's life, he traveled the world giving talks and performing remarkable consulting projects. Dr. Shingo has written more than 10 books and countless cited papers used in manufacturing today. After many years of hard work, Utah State University created an award known as the Shingo Prize, which is given for the remarkable performance of manufacturers. Along with Shigeo's inspiring efforts, Mr. Taiichi Ono was given much credit for the development of the Toyota production system. This great engineer 
brought such tools as the Kanban system to life and was a key facilitator in the development of the just-in-time system. Because of Mr. Ono's great achievements, almost every industrial engineer, continuous improvement specialist, and practitioner of Lean can trace a concept, technique, or methodology they use back to Mr. Ono. We will discuss many of Mr. Ono's techniques later on. While Mr. Ono and Dr. Shingo were key facilitators of the Toyota production system, none of Toyota would have existed with Mr. Sakichi Toyota. Born on February 14, 1867 in the village of Yamaguchi, Mr. Toyota was destined for greatness. As a young boy, Mr. Toyota watched as his grandmother worked tirelessly on her loom. The looms during this time required the full attention of the workers who were running them. At that time, if a weft or the warp thread breaks and the workers not able to stop the machine right away, defects can occur. Some of the defects would render fabric entirely defective. This wasted a lot of thread and material and limited the capacity of those working on looms. As a countermeasure, Mr. Toyota researched systems to prevent these defects from occurring. This research led to the idea of a small hammer dropping onto the thread when it broke and stopped the machine without a worker's assistance. As a result, workers did not have to be present all the time and could run more than one machine and defects were greatly reduced. This innovative development was the beginning of the pillar you see in the Toyota house known as the Jadoka Pillar. Fast forward to the 1990s and another turning point was beginning in the world of lean. A gentleman by the name of James Walmack published a book entitled The Machine That Changed the World. This book documented many different stages and developments of lean manufacturing and in fact was credited with coining the term lean manufacturing. While history will always play an important role in the birth of lean, it is important to note that each and every one of you will play an important role too. The ideas of lean were brought to life out of the desire to improve and innovate. Lean is strongest in a community approach where people come together with great ideas and a common goal. Though you may not believe it, through each of your desire to learn lean, you keep the legacy alive and continue to move the world forward with improvements and new ways of doing things.